I must confess to you that when we get to Agnes, these martyrs have things to teach us. We don't just remember them strictly for their heroism or the way they exemplified a certain aspect of the Christian life and faith, but they really are our doctors of the church. They are our teachers. And so we learn from them. And so today, in many ways, we're learning from a 12-year-old girl named Agnes. Agnes was a woman of privilege in ancient Rome. At that time, Christianity was considered uh, treacherous, treasonous, and highly, highly suspicious. No one of Agnes's class would ever deign to be a part of something like this. And yet, Agnes had become a Christian. In that day, in early Rome, at the age of 12, she was suitable to be betrothed. And so even though it seems odd to us to think about a 12-year-old having suitors, she had suitors. And they knew that it was known among her sort of private circle that Agnes was a Christian. So the charge of the suitor was not just to woo her, but to woo her away from her faith into this marriage. She had every reason to have said yes. As a woman of great privilege and wealth, she had responsibilities. She was to marry and bear an heir. She was to continue the family line. She was to manage the wealth of her household. Uh, all of that she had been told all of her life. So being a suitor, being sought at this point was no surprise. The surprise was, was that she consistently said no. Every time. Handsome, wealthy, well-connected, didn't matter. She kept saying no. She said, I belong to Jesus. It was scandalous, and it aroused anger in the suitors who rejected her. And so they reported her. She was engaged, as it were, in an illegal religion. Agnes was eventually executed. It was shocking to Roman society that a 12-year-old female aristocrat would be publicly executed with the sword. And, and in fact, it really became one of the cliches about the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. It caused such a stir that people began to say, what is it about Christianity that would cause a 12-year-old woman to renounce all of this and go to her death? The collect rightly leads us not so much to her actions, but to what motivated her actions. The prayer is witnessing to the true love of her Redeemer and grant us the power to understand with all your saints what is the breadth, quoting Ephesians, length, depth, height, and to know the love that passes all knowledge. She had been wooed. Her first suitor was Christ. And because she was wed to him, she would say no to no other. That's, that's the heartbeat of Agnes' life and witness. So no wonder Paul brings that to bear, because that's the thread, that's the blood-red thread of the early church, is that kind of passionate commitment to say yes to Christ, regardless of how high the cost and it was not because they were particularly more courageous than we are. It was because they had been won by love. And that was what changed the heart, which motivated the actions, which turned the world upside down, to quote the book of Acts. So as we are here remembering the life of Agnes, I want us not to much, so much to be challenged by her courage as it much, much, much to be invited into that love. Because in the end, that's what it means to become, as the gospel invited us to, to become as a little child. The reason a little child 
is willing to, in essence, be led, which is the essence of what childlikeness is in the gospel, is because that child has absolute trust in the overwhelming, protective, all-consuming, never-failing love of this parent who died, who died and rose again. And so, you see, we're not, we're not being invited to become as a little child as in, you know, a two-year-old rat. Or any other things that you think about. You think about children, oh, I'm glad I don't have to go through that anymore. But instead, it has everything to do with the joy of being willing to be held in the arms of the one who loves you and knows will not harm you. To be carried, to be held by the hand, to be walking into even incredibly dangerous places knowing that because you have the hand of the one who loves you, all in the essence will be well. So that the song of song reading, come away my love, is in fact an invitation of our Lord in this context to come so fully into his presence that we are eventually ushered into glory. Song of Solomon in this context is in fact a vision of heaven where union is total, and there is no pain, and there is no grief, and where God wipes away every tear from every eye. So it is to that that we say yes today, that God would woo us, that we in essence say yes, come after me. Get at those places where I'm still afraid where my heart is still tight with the desire to control myself. Help me instead to learn more of what it means to yield and to know, as Paul prayed, as we prayed, that love which surpasses mere knowledge, the love that will not let us go. That's what Agnes shows us. That's the invitation of Jesus in the gospel. It is to that to which we are invited to say yes. Amen. Amen.